Hey everybody, um, this is going to be a video of uh, that's going to walk you through the process of changing the uh, the coolant temperature sensor and the uh, the harness on the uh, Polaris FST um, from 2006 to 2012. Uh, the the 08 and, and up may be a little bit different, but this definitely applies to the 2006 and 2007. Um, for those of you who are, are not aware, um, the uh, the uh, Polaris FST, especially the 06 and the 07s, had a uh, knack for uh, having erratic um, temperature sent temperature readings on the uh, on the sled even after it's warmed up. So what would happen is that you know the going from the nominal temperature temperature from 150 to 170 degrees, it would just drop um, down to like the 110, 109, or, or anything in below. And the reason is uh, that temperature sensor is, is located right up against the jack shaft, and uh, I'll show you as we go along. So essentially, what happens is the uh, the temperature sensor and the harness rubs up right along the jack shaft. And over time, it creates wear, and it just uh, makes the uh, the connection loose. So that's what causes the uh, the erratic uh, uh, temperature readings, especially under load. Uh, when uh, you accelerate, the motor will shift back, it'll hit the jack shaft, and basically, it, the uh, end of the sensor will rub on the jack shaft. So, um, to get to the the sensor, I'm just going to briefly walk you through uh, what you have to remove um, to get at it. Um, at this point, I'm already doing another repair on it, so I already have the seat and the tank and the console off. Um, there's a video on how to do that as far as uh, do, how to remove that, so I'll put a link on uh, how to remove that in the video so you can follow along with it to get you up to this point. But just to give you a, uh, an overview of where you're going to have to do at this point is we're going to have to remove the... Uh, the suitcase, as far as the exhaust, the mid pipe, um, we're going to have to remove the boost box, we're going to have to remove the charge tube, and then if we go over to the other side, we're going to remove the air box and the mounting bolts for the engine on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'll walk you through that process. Um, I'm going to uh, essentially make a, a bunch of different clips in it and I'm going to string it all into one You know, because I'm shooting this by myself. I don't have a tripod or anything like that. I'm going to show you where the fasteners are to, to take everything apart. So as far as the air box, the air box is pretty easy. Um, there's a, a hose clamp with a, uh, you know, holding on to the turbo inlet. You're going to have to loosen this. You're going to take off the relay box that just comes forward. And then, uh, as far as the other air box connection, there's a hose clamp, which is actually the vent from the, uh, from the uh, oil passage. That needs to come off. And then uh, the air box comes right off. So, all right. So, as far as the air box, I, I actually lied. There's actually. Uh, there's an electrical connection on the back of the box, and then there's a grommet that holds the, uh, the electrical connection into the box you have to remove. But once you do that, you know, there's the, uh, the vent that goes into the side of the air box, and then there's the uh, turbo inlet. Once you, essentially make, once you make those three disconnects here, here, and here, and the, and the relay, the air box comes right off. Okay, the next step in the process is you need to get the... Uh, the um, the air box off. Oh, I'm sorry. The uh, the the boost box off. And essentially, there's uh, there's um, there's six connections. There's this guy right here. There is these two clamps from the uh, charge tube. There's uh, the first hose clamp holding on the uh, the car boot on. You're gonna take that off. You can loosen that off. Sometimes it'll be, make it be a little bit easier for you. And then, uh, as far as on the other side, there's the two clamps right here. 
the right there and right there. Once you loosen uh, all those clamps, the, uh, the the boost box will slide right off, and uh, that's essentially it as far as that step. Okay, so once you loosen up the clamps, the uh, the boost box will come right off. I actually took the intake to the the uh, charge pipe off as well. It's just a little easier. And uh, on the back of the uh, the uh, the boost box is the mass airflow sensor. You just uh, depress the clip, and then it comes right off. And then the uh, the uh, the boost box is free. All right. So, um, so the next step in this huge rat's nest, where it's called a, a wiring harness, is the uh, is the, uh, the the culprit. And I'm gonna see if I can get you down in there to take a look. Um, if you look, right down there is the temperature sensor. And it's the uh, the blue plug, the pigtail. So if you look, right in front of it is the jack shaft and then, and then, and then there's the jack shaft cover. Now one of the uh, preventive fixes as far as prevent this from happening is uh, notching the uh, the jack shaft, and uh, as you can see, the uh, clearance is still very tight. Even in this, uh, and honestly, the jack shaft for this one has already been notched. So the next step is to get more clearance and ruin the work. And and uh, and this thing is, we're gonna take the throttle bodies off next. And the throttle bodies are just held on by two hose clamps. There's one right here, and then there's another one right there. So yeah, essentially you loosen those those two clamps and these uh, throttle bodies will come right off. So let's do that now. Okay, so now that you have the, uh, the throttle bodies removed, the easiest thing you do so you don't lose your mind and everything else is just grab some wire ties and just tie them out of the way um, and just get them out of the way. And it's, it's, it's not gonna hurt it like this, keeping them up here like that. So just get them out of, out of your way. All right, so now that we have the throttle bodies removed, this is the cause of the issue. So if you look, that is the temperature sensor. Uh, um, you know, if you see the the brass nut, um, well, the yeah, the brass nut. That's the temperature sensor going into the block of the engine, and the blue wire is the harness going into the uh, the sensor. So if you look. And again, this thing has already been notched, right? So if you can see how close this thing is to the to the, uh, to the uh, jack shaft cover, you can imagine why these things fail, all right? This was a utter fucking design failure from Polaris. How they put this in here without without not knowing that they're gonna have any issues is beyond me. Because because if you look at it. All they had to do was essentially either modify the mounting plates for the engine by a half an inch, either bring it forward or move it up by a half an inch, and all these problems would, would never uh, exist. But for whatever reason, players just jam this thing in here and hope for the best, and it fails. So, um, so if you look at it, it probably looks pretty bad on camera because it is. It's a real prick. To get in there, uh, you know, getting the harness off isn't that bad. But the problem is, the way this sensor is located in there, there is no way to get any tools in there. So what you have to do is, you have to take the motor mounts off this engine. And there's two. There's one right here, which is built into the side of the tunnel. There's one right here, and then on the other side, which I'll show you. After I remove the suitcase, uh, it's on the other side. And the way to get the suitcase off is there's there's uh, a couple of retention springs. There's two over here. There's a strap. I believe that's a 10 millimeter nut. And then uh, take this heat shield off, and then you'll you'll get access to the uh, the two springs on this side. And once you have those things out, the uh, the suitcase comes right off. 
So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the suitcase off and the mid pipe and the heat shield and I'll show you where the uh, the other mount is. All right, so now that the uh, the suitcase is off, it uh, gets you uh, access to the second motor mount. And here's the other mount, All right? So what you have to do is take this mount off, take the other one out. And what essentially what that's gonna do, um, and don't worry about as far as you're not being able to get it back together the thing's not going to drop in the chassis and and you're not going to run into any issues or anything like that so what's going to happen is when you take the two mounts off it's going to allow the give you it's going to allow you to basically uh rotate the engine clockwise or counterclockwise depending on what you, which way you're looking at it and essentially it'll allow you to rotate it and lift it up and when you do that it's going to uh give you access much needed access to get that uh temperature sensor out so okay now that you have the mounts removed on, on both sides essentially the engine is just sitting in there so what you're going to want to do is take your biggest pry bar that you have and you're going to stick it in between the uh the throttle body and the jack shaft cover and what you can do is you're just gonna press down and as you can see the uh, the engine's gonna move quite a bit and what this is gonna do this is essentially it's gonna give you access to uh, get the temperature uh, sensor out so what's gonna happen is that is a 19 it's either I think it's a three-quarter inch socket uh, I didn't have any three-quarter inch deep walls so I just used a 19 and I was able to get it off but what's going to happen is because um, essentially this is one of the lowest points in the engine as far as coolant um, the coolant is going to drain so um, put a uh, catch pan on the floor or wherever your sled is located at so you don't make a mess and uh, I'll show you um, later in the video where you uh, as far as where you, the, the process as far as uh, bleeding the coolant and everything else so um, I already replaced the sensor once um, I replaced it before I went out for a ride and during the season um, I was waiting for the, uh, the, the the harness to come in from Polaris so the sensor has already been replaced on this uh, on my, my sled um, if you want you have two options you can either pay Polaris $40 or whatever it is for that sensor or $28 for that sensor or you can go to AutoZone or Pep, or Pep Boys or Napa wherever you want and you can pick up a, uh, a temperature sensor for a 1998 Cadillac Katera that's the only uh, um, sled it, it cross references to because it's a Bosch type uh, sensor the uh the, the end on it is different as far as a wiring harness um and i believe the uh, the sensor going that route it's like 18 bucks so it's up to you as far as what you guys want to do i put in the uh the one from AutoZone, the the one from the katera for, for the katera because at the time i had to get it done to go riding in a way and i didn't want to wait for polaris to send it so I, I, I went through all this already just so I could go for riding for the weekend. I replaced it and I knew I had to replace the harness. So I ordered the harness from Polaris because you can't get it through anybody else. And uh, so the sled's been running with that sensor for probably like two or 300 miles. At, at, and so far it's been fine. I haven't had any issues with it. So, so uh, I'll show you the next part as far as the uh, part that you're gonna order from Polaris as far as the repair harness uh, that you need to order okay so if you're looking at this video chances are you're having the same symptoms as I am so Polaris and in their infinite wisdom realized they had an issue with this design so you know of course they didn't uh, issue a recall or anything like that uh, essentially they uh, they came up with a kit to fix this their their design issue right so what you have to do is the part number for this for this kit is 2203748 and it's $45. All right. So let's let's take a look at what you get 
for $45 from Polaris. Let's open this bag. Hey, right. so $45, you get a piece of wire loom, set of instructions, uh, four wire ties, and the harness. That's it. Can you really, you know, can you really tell me uh, it, it costs players more than a nickel to put this thing together? And again, it's not because it's a wear item, it's a design flaw. And, and again, the, 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 uh, this is just the sensor. This is just the harness. You still have to buy the sensor. So with this, you know, if you're doing this on your, on your own or you're paying a dealer to fix it, there's a hundred dollars in parts in, in, re in reality, it probably costs all of $2 to make it. So, but anyway, um, so what you have to do is here's the, uh, the end from Polaris. And what you have to do is you have to re remove the existing one and you have two options and you can either butt connect it together or you can, you can solder it. For me, I'm going to solder it. Uh, I don't like using butt connectors cause I've never had any luck with them. They always vibrate loose or, or and, and cause more issues. And you know, because of where that, where this thing is, it's not accessible. It's not something you want to really do a half ass job on. You might as well just take the time, do it once, do it right, and, and know that you have no issues with it. So I'm going to remove the existing harness. I'm going to cut it off and then I'm going to, um, solder the two connections, shrink wrap it and put it back together. All right. So the, uh, the shrink tube has been hit with some heat. It's nice and tight and uh, it's ready to go. So the last thing uh, you have to do at this point is take the uh, the uh, flex loom that's, that apparently is, is uh, made of platinum and gold, you know, for what char uh, Polaris charges us for it. And you're just gonna, you're gonna cut it to length and fasten it down with the, uh, the zip ties that Polaris gave you and, and make it nice and secure and then reconnect it to the end uh, of the uh, temperature sensor, which is right there. A two uh, uh, terminal connector. So okay, so now you should be at this point where you have the uh, you replace the uh, the temperature sensor and the harness. And the only thing you have to do at this point is just is uh, take a couple of the wire ties, and you're gonna you're gonna essentially tie these up against the uh, this uh, the uh, the fuel rail for the injector, you know, just don't make it too tight. But just, you know, put it snug enough so they're not all around all over the place. So, all right. So at this point, the only thing you have to do is reassembly. And essentially reassembly is kind of the reverse of taking it apart. Um, so what you want to do is, you know, put the mounts in on both sides and put it back together. All right, so the next, you know, I'm not going to show it on the video because I've already done it. Um, but the last thing you have to do is once you get everything back together is bleeding the uh, the coolant or in, you know, bleeding the, uh, the air out of the coolant system. So what you have to do is on the side of the engine, right, there, this is the oil, um, supply line to the turbo, right? So it basically comes out of the, uh, there's a hose that goes from, an oil hose from the, from the side of the engine to the turbo. To the right of it is a, I believe it's either a half inch or a 9 16 bolt, maybe 12 meter, 12 milliliter, I'm not sure. But on the 06, the 07s, and I think on the 08s, this is the process that you have to do to bleed the uh, the coolant system in here, um, because for whatever reason, Polaris didn't include a uh, a venting hole and a thermostat to release all the trap there. All right, so what you want to do is once you get everything back together, um, you're gonna want to take the cap off the radiator, um, take the cap off of. Uh, the uh, the expansion bottle and then fill it up. Don't worry about filling, putting any coolant in here. Essentially, what we're doing is you want to take the cap off of here just to let any of the major air escape. You're gonna be filling the the system from here, um, from the uh, from the radiator cap. 
so again you know honestly at this point everything's all back together um so what you're gonna do is you're gonna start start it up and once it's running obviously you know the air box is, is gonna have to be off the uh the sensor is gonna have to be unplugged you're gonna get a check engine light but don't worry about it it's because the sensor is unplugged right so top off the coolant let it run and what you're gonna do is watch running you're gonna uh crack this bolt you don't have to take it out you just have to crack it to let the air escape and while it's running let it come up to temp to 125 150 degrees and continue adding coolant in through the through the filler neck until it doesn't take any more and then once the the air is uh stopped out of coming out of this bleeder valve tighten it up and then go ahead and uh shut it off um put the cap back on and let everything sit overnight and at that point you know you're gonna leave this sealed you're not gonna do any more filling uh through here this essentially is gonna be sealed and then as far as topping it off you're gonna go to the expansion tank and honestly you're gonna put the cap back on this and what you're gonna do is uh, on the expansion tank wherever this level is you're gonna bring it to the cold fill line which is right here so and uh once you do that just go ahead and start it back up you know make sure it's coming up to temp you know check the uh the tunnels uh the 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 uh the tubes on the tunnel make sure that they're coming up to temp and just for reference the coolant flow goes from the left hand side all the way back through the tunnel and over to the right so as you're going through the initial bleed process you may start freaking out because the, the, the warmers aren't you know the, the tunnel isn't getting warm isn't getting warm go check on the left hand side and if it's hot on that side eventually you know you'll start feeling warmth on this side so don't worry about it if you don't see you know you feel heat off, coming off the tunnel uh right away so and then it's just a matter of putting it back together and uh run it a couple times make sure it the 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 coolant uh stays at the same level and at that point you're pretty much good to go and until uh the uh that that uh pigtail fails again because you know if we look at if we look at it um again players didn't change the uh the design of the plug essentially they just sent they supplied you with a new plug with the same design which is going to just fail again just the way it's designed so you may end up doing this again depending on how uh, long you keep the sled so uh, i hope this helps everybody i know i've i know uh on polaris files this is uh, talked about quite a bit um and uh as far as i know i don't think everybody's posted a video on uh the repair process on this particular issue so i hope this helps everybody out um it's you know it's nice to read on the form but you know once you see some pictures and some videos and everything else walking through the process uh honestly it's not that bad of a job until you get into the coolant sensor oh one more thing <laughs> i forgot to tell you um when you take that sensor out and uh, it's gonna be very hard to tell but essentially there's a gap between the edge of the engine and the uh, the tunnel. And in coincidence, the uh, the temp it's just big enough for the temp sensor to to, uh, to slide down the crack. Don't ask me how I know. Just I'll just tell you that. Um, be careful when you're taking the sensor out because if you're if uh, you're not careful, the the sensor will slide down that crack. And you'll never see it again don't ask me how i know but i know so um stick a rag down in, in between that uh that gap and just to make sure you don't drop it down there because i did and i kind of swore among other things <laughs> when i did it so uh again i hope this helps everybody and uh and uh save you some money from going to the dealer and doing it yourself so other than some hand tools the job is not that hard um, all it requires is patience and a little bit of, uh, uh, working knowledge on, you know, assembly and how to use a soldering iron and that's about it. So 
Again, I, I hope this helps everybody. If there's any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw them in the comments box, and I'll, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And thanks for watching, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.